Next talk is by Zun Wei and Shang On. So you want to build antivirus engine. Hey guys, welcome to join our talk. Today we will be demonstrating our engine, Quark. It is an obfuscation neglect Android malware scoring system. So my name is Jun Wei Song. I'm a security researcher and the co-founder of Quark Engine. And we also have another speaker, Yu Xiang. He is the core member of Quark Engine. So this is the outline. Number one, we will introduce our malware scoring system. Number two, we will show you how we design the Delphi bytecode loader. Number three, we will go through two cases of real malware analysis using Quark Engine. Number four, we will share our strategy of generating the detection rules. And the last thing, yes, the future works. We still have lots of things to do. All right, so let's introduce the malware scoring system. As we know, when developing a malware analysis engine, it is important to have a scoring system. However, those systems are either business secret or too complicated. Therefore, we decide to create a simple but solid one and take that as a challenge. And since we want to design a novel scoring system, we start reading and decoding what other people do in the field of cybersecurity because we don't want our ideas to be subject to the existing systems. So we start to find ideas in fields other than cybersecurity. And luckily we found one. Yes, the best practice we found is the criminal law. When sentenced a penalty for a criminal, the judge with the penalties based on the criminal law. And after uh, decoding the law, we find principles behind it. And we develop a scoring system for Android malware. There are only eight principles decoded from the criminal law, and I will go through it in the following slides. Now, let's see principle number one. A malware crime consists of action and target. In the criminal law, the definition of a crime consists of action and target. For example, steal money or kill people. So with this principle in mind, we develop a definition of a crime for Android malware. And definition is the malware crime consists of action and target. For example, steal photos or steal your banking account passwords. Now, let's see principle number two. We consider that the loss of fame is greater than the loss of wealth. In a criminal law, physical body injury is more serious than psychological injury. So the principle we decode here is when things are hard to recover, we consider it a family. When this principle decode, we develop our second principle. We consider the loss of fame is greater than the loss of wealth because it's easier to make money back than reveal your reputation. Okay, now let's see principle number three, arithmetic sequence. In the criminal law, when a murderer is sentenced 20 years in prison, and a robber is sentenced seven years in prison for his crime. Why 20 and seven years? Why the number? We found no obvious principle. We found no obvious principle in a criminal law. So we use arithmetic sequence to weigh the penalty of each crime. For example, the penalty weight of Y1, 10, Y2, 20, Y3, 30, etc. So now let's see the most important part of the scoring system. 
we create an order theory, which consists of three principles, principle four, five, and six. Let's first look at the principle number four. The later the stage, the more we are sure that the crime is practiced. As mentioned in chapter four of Taiwan criminal law, each crime consists of a sequence of behaviors. Those behaviors can be categorized in a specific order. Let's take murder, for example. Determining means somebody designed to kill someone. Conspiracy means he or she start a make a plan for the murder. Preparation means buying stuff like weapons or arranging a service for a murder plan. Star means when things are all set, the murderer takes action and is on the way to kill someone. Practice means the murderer does pull the trigger and shoot someone. So as we can see here, the latter the stage, the more we are sure that the crime is practiced. When the principle in mind, we develop Android malware crime order theory. In this theory, we also have five stages for a crime. For example, if a malware tries to send out your location data by using SNS, in stage one, we check we will check if relative permission is requested by the malware. And then we will check if key native API is code. In stage three, we will see if certain combination of native API exists. And then we will check if the APIs are code in a specific order. Finally, we will check if APIs are handling the same register. Okay, so now you can see from this picture, this is a two-dimensional map for Android malware crime. For the crimes, we put them in Y axis. And for each crime, we use X axis to see the evidence we call for the crime. So X5Y1 means in crime number one, we have found native APIs that are called in a correct sequence and they are handling the same register. And X, X3, Y5 means in crime number five, we have found certain combination of native APIs that is used in this APK. So now let's look at principle number five. The more evidence we call, the more penalty way we give. So we give stage two more way than stage one and stage three more way than stage two, et cetera. Okay, principle number six, proportional sequence. As we decode from the criminal law, the later the stage, the more we are sure that the crime is practiced. So we consider proportional sequence, for example, two to the power of n to present such principle in our scoring system. All right, principle number seven. Crimes are independent events. For similarity, we assume crimes are independent events and penalty ways can be added up directly. So this is the example of adding up two crimes. In the malware, we found two crimes. They are stealing photo and steal your banking account password. So the calculation of the total penalty way is quite simple. For each crime, we use penalty way to, of a crime to multiply proportion of cop evidence and add up the result of the two. The last principle, principle number eight, threshold generate system. After calculating the total penalty way for a malware, we need to have a threat level thresholds so that we can tell which threat level does the malware fill in. Unfortunately, we can find them in the criminal law, but we know we need to design a threshold general system for that, not just give any number by intuition. So we designed that threshold for each level is the sum of the same proportion of count evidence multiply penalty weight of a crime. 
We know it's, it is not, not a perfect one, but we are sure that we build a foundation for future optimization. All right, so now let's talk about the design logic of Delphi Bicode Loader. Our Delphi Bicode Loader is actually the implementation of the Android malware crime order theory. We implement every stage of the theory. There are five stages. The first stage are easy. We simply use API in another open source tool, Android Guard, to implement the first three stages. As I just mentioned, the implementation of first three stages are easy. But in stage four, we need to do a little bit more. So before the implementation, we need to do, we need to know what does stage four do. In stage four, we find the calling sequence of native APIs and check if they are called in a specific order. For example, if a malware sent out your location data by SNS, then first it will call native API get cell location to get your location data, and then call native API send text message to send your location data by SNS. Normally, native API are work in functions, so we trust back to see which function is cross-referenced from the native APIs. And we call those functions the parent function. And we will keep tracing back until we find mutual parent function for both the native API. Here is the example. Send text message is called by send SNS, which is the parent function of send text message. And get cell location is called by get location, which is the parent function of get cell location. And if, if we keep tracing back, we will see that both send SNS and get location shares the same parent function, send message. And after we find a mutual parent function, we will scan through a small line code of the mutual parent function and check which function is called first. So this is the small line code of send message. We can see that get location is called first to get location data of the cell phone. And the send SNS is called to send out the location data. And in stage four, we found out that our design can also overcome the obfuscation techniques used by the malware. When applying obfuscation techniques, function except native APIs are renamed. This has made the decompile source code hard to read for human. The machine can still run the code because the logic of the code remains the same. Here is the example. When applying obfuscation techniques, native API send text message is called by function k, and function k is called by function f. The other native API get cell location is called by function e, and both function e and f shares the same parent function a. You see, if you start reading the decompile source code of A, it will be hard to figure out what is going on there. By the way, since our goal is to find the mutual parent function, so it doesn't matter how many layers the workers are. Now, let's see the implementation of stage five. Yes, the most important part. In stage five, we need to confirm that if the native API are handling the send register. Let's use the send example. Send out your location data by using SNS. So when native API gets cell location is code, it will return the location data of the cell phone. And what we do in stage five is to check if the other native API send text message sends out the location data returned from get cell location. So in stage five, we simulate the CPU operation. We read line by line of the small line source code and operate like CPU to get two things. First, the value of uh, every register. Second, 
the information like functions who have operate the same register. To make this happen, we create a self-defined data type. We call it register object. In each register object, we store three kinds of information. Number one, the register name. Number two, the value of the register. Number three, the function who use this fun, uh, use this register. Let's see the example. So the register name is V7, and the value of the register is a string. And the string appends the value of string one and the result of function one. And then we can see that the register is used as the input resource of the function two. By the way, when filling the value of used by which function in a register object, we expand every register by cross-referencing of the register object in a table. So for example, by cross-referencing, we know that V8 is a string called user location and V3 is a function called get location. As you can see in the lower right corner, the result of get location is append to the string user location. And the new string is sent out by using function send SNS. In other words, the value of register V7 is generated by using function get location, which has native API 1 in it. And the value is used as an input for a function send SNS, which has native API 2 in it. So now we prove that by using the register objects, we can check if the API are handling the same register. So after we scan through the source code, we produce lots of register objects. And those register objects will be organized when a two-dimensional Python list. It is a similar idea like hash table. We use it to boost out the read and write of the list. So now, Let's see the table. As you can see here, register v4 has three register objects. That means in the source code we scan, v4 was used three times. And every time we, when it was used, we store the present value of the register and the function who use it if there's one. So basically, the whole table is the history of the register. So when we finish constructing the table, we then scan through all register objects in the table to check if the native APIs are handling the same register. So now let's see how to use Quark Engine to analyze the malware. And Xiang will take care of this part. Okay, so in this section, we prepare two malware. One is non-obfuscated and the other one is obfuscated. And for each malware, we'll show how we detect the behavior of the malware with the detection rule. Now let's look at first malware. This is a non-obfuscated one. We will use the rule in Quark Engine to detect whether if the malware sent out cell phone's location data by using SMS. So this is the detailed report of Quark Engine. In this report, the engine shows the detection result of one single malware behavior, or you can say one single malware crime. So for example, we try to find it, the malware sent out your location data by using SMS. In this report, we list out the evidence we found in each stage of the Android malware crime order theory. And this report shows we find evidence in every stage, which means we have 100% of confidence that the malware has this behavior. So let's see. In stage one, permissions like send SMS, access course location, and find locations are requested. In this second stage, key native APIs like get cell locations and send text message are used. And in stage three, we found certain combination of native APIs exist 
And in stage four, we found out that in functions like send message and do byte, that the API are called in the right sequence. And in stage five, in functions send message, we found out that those APIs are handling the same register. So now let's think. If you are analyzing this malware and you want to trace the decompiled source code, see the evidence, how do you do it? Our suggestion is start backwards. That means you start from the stage five. For example, in stage five, we know that inside function of send message, it has two functions that contains the two native APIs respectively, and they are handling the same register. So you start to locate function send message in the decompile source code. And in stage four, we know that those two functions are called in the right sequence. So we can start to find functions like uh, that contains the native APIs and check if they are really called in the right sequence. The information of the two functions and the sequence will be shown in the next version of Quark Engine. So now let's look at the real example. Let's locate the function set message. And we found out that two functions that contains the two native API respectively, they are send SMS and get locations. And if we dive into the function of get location, we'll see that it contains the native API get cell locations. And if we dive in the function of send SMS, we'll see that it contains native API send text message. So the code here means it first collects your cell phone location data and send it out through SMS. So now let's dive into the source code of get locations. As you can see in the source code, it tries to call native APIs get cell locations and return this information at the end of the code. And now let's dive in the source code of send SMS. Native API send text message is used to send out location info. Quite simple, isn't it? So now let's look at the second malware. This is an obfuscated one. We will use the rule in Quark Engine to find whether if the malware detect Wi-Fi hotspot by gathering information like active network info and cell phone, loca uh, cell phone location. Okay, so as a malware analyst, we read the report backwards. As you can see in stage five, there are functions like p.a, at view.c, and af.run. Has two functions that contains the native APIs respectively, and they are handling the same register. And in stage four, those two functions are also called in write sequence in function p.a, at view.c, and af.run. So, According to this report, to this report, we can say that the malware has the behavior of Wi-Fi hotspot detection in three parts of the source code. We can pick any part of the further analyst. So we pick up function p.a. So now let's see the fun source code. Let's locate function p.a. And we found out that two functions that contains the two native API respectively, there are ap.a and f.f. And if we dive into the function of ap.a, we will see that it contains native API get active network info. And if we dive into the function of f.f, we'll see that it contains native APIs get cell locations. So the code here means after collecting information from function ap.a and f.f, they send the information as an input for function am.a. So now let's dive into the source code of function ap.a. As you can see in the source code, it tries to call native API get active network info and return the related information at some point. And now let's dive into the source code of f.f. Native API get cell locations is used to get the cell phone location data. And this information is processed with some other strings. At the end of this function, it returns the string with the information. As mentioned early, earlier, after collecting information from function ap.a and f.f, they use the information as an input for function am.a. And we noticed one thing, that function am.a used byte array output string as one of its input parameters. 
And we know when seeing byte array output string, it means the function is probably trying to write the data into a file. This is amazing, isn't it? So with Quark Engine, malware analysts can really boost up their productivity. Okay, so now I'll introduce our detection rule generate strategy. So why do we need to develop uh, the, the detection rule generate strategy? Because to make our engine practical and easy to use, we need to have more detection rules. However, the speed of rule generated by human is quite slow. And the human generated rule is subject to his or her experiences malware analysis. So we develop a rule generated strategy to boost up the production of detection rules. Since our goal is to find all kinds of behavior in the malware. So if we use permissions and native APIs to generate all possible rules, we'll have an amazing amount of rules. After generating rules, we then use Quark Engine to find the intersection between those amazing amount of rules and the malware we prepared. In other words, we find rules that match the malware behavior. However, this is not a good way to generate detection rules because it's time and resource consuming. So we developed a seven step rule generate strategy. So first step one, we crawl down all native API information on Android Offshore API reference. For example, this is the native API information of send text message. You can see the input parameters, returns value, and the description of this API. Okay, so next step two, we did a little bit modification to our engine. We ignore the permissions checks in stage one of the Android malware crime order theory. And in step three, we find all kinds of API combinations and generate rules without permissions information. In step four, we use the modified Quark engine to find the intersection of the rules and the malwares. We call rules in the intersection the first stage verified rules. In other words, this rule needs to be verified again. And since we don't need to generate rules with permissions and verify the permissions in Quark engine, the whole process of rule production speed up. Next in step five, we try to generate rules with permissions. Inside the intersection, we have first stage verified rules matched uh, with malware. We then use the first stage rule and permissions in the matched malware to generate rules with permissions, which is the second stage rules. In step six, we then use the Quark engine, which is the full function version to find again, the intersection of the second stage rule, which, is, which are the one with permissions and the malware we prepared. After that, for each rules, we level the number of matched malware. For example, the behavior of number one, the, the behavior rule of number one can be found in the 100 malware. So finally, step seven, after leveling the rules, we then sort the rule by number of matched malware. We review the rules from the highest matched one. All right, the last part, future works. As I mentioned earlier, we still have a lot of things to do, for example, we need to have more detection rules, and we also need to deal with that .so file and packed APKs. And we want to have more features of the Delphi by code loader, for example, the downloader. And applying the scoring system to other binary formats is also in our to-do list. And if we noticed that API changed in different version of Android. We'll also take care of the, this problem in the next version of Quark. Uh, we probably will change the core library since Android Guard is quite inactive recently. And one more thing, actually we are trying to make Quark easier to integrate it uh, to other tools. For example, user can import Quark in Python library and output the analysis result as a JSON file. And now Quark is collected in Black R Linux and Intel O, which is the threat intelligence analysis tool. And there's one nugget that I want to uh, share. We work at the limit of our tools. When new tools come, come along, new things are possible. Okay, that's all for today. And if you have any question, 
please feel free to DM or Twitter accounts.